لما تسمع الميلودي When a country is emerging from decades of sanctions, a military invasion and is being torn apart by civil war, the to-do list is a difficult one to say the least. Rarely does data figure high on the agenda, but without reliable baselines, how can you measure change, let alone success? Information didn't just suddenly disappear in the chaos of conflict. It had been missing long before 2003. Whether it's a family tree or a contract between two neighbours, Iraqis often have their own methods for collecting and maintaining valuable information. This is Neda Hussein Abdullah, Publications Manager in Iraq's Central Organization for Statistics in the Ministry of Planning. She's been working on data for over 17 years. Despite the fact that the Ministry's website lists census data, strictly speaking, there isn't quite an accurate description. Since then, understanding the composition of the Iraqi population, as well as their needs, hasn't got easier. Mutinebi Street in Baghdad's Old Quarter was once Iraq's intellectual hub. Named after an Iraqi poet from the 9th century, the street was bombed heavily in 2007. The booksellers have now returned and offer the memoirs of Tony Blair, 80s tourist guides for Europeans and the tourists side by side. Iraq's older generation in particular still rely on ink and paper to gain information about the world around them. In the 70s and early 80s, Iraq's education system was such a model of success that other countries sought to emulate its methods. Huge spending on education and a law which meant that failure to attend school was punishable by prison resulted in school enrolment being virtually 100%. Literacy during this period was at more than 90%, while the regional average struggled to get above 50%. But decades of sanctions and two wars took their toll on education, and Iraq slipped behind many of its neighbours. By 2000, one in four Iraqi adults were illiterate. That's now starting to improve, but it does undoubtedly affect the general population's ability to use data. What's more, Saddam Hussein's regime routinely collected statistics that could be used for oppression and persecution. Even a government official asking for a name and address was met with fear because of the potential consequences. That inevitably changes people's relationships with government numbers. Zina is a student of computer sciences at the University of Baghdad. She's back in her final year after leaving four years ago. So I tried to copy a, a code from uh, 2008, uh, which is, exists in, in all, uh, all computer devices in, in uh, our college. Uh, and I tried to, to paste it in, uh, in my versions here, mm. in my computer. Uh, so, you know, it's 2010, they didn't work, they didn't work. 
At the ministry, having the latest software was also cited as a problem. But being a couple of years behind technology in the Western world actually demonstrates an impressive catch-up. فالبيانات بصراحة التقارير القديمة الورقية اللي كنا محتفظين بها اللي أخذوها الموظفين بالبيوت حاولت إنه جبت لنا جهاز سكنر فتحتها وخليت يعني تأخذ يعني يسويها سكنر وحولها على الكمبيوتر إلا بهذه الطريقة قدرت وإلا ما ممكن يعني نسوي If education, technology and a concern for openness and accuracy advance, Iraqi data may one day rival that of other Arab countries. If not, government policy will be guided by faith rather than fact.